Hi guys, Colleen here from Walking the Resonant Path. I just want to talk to you today about the Egyptian goddess Bastet, also known as Bast by most people, and that's what I'll be using today, Bast. And she is the goddess of cats, obviously, because she is often depicted with a cat's head. Now, she used to be depicted with a lion's head, and she was the equivalent to the Egyptian goddess Sekhmet yeah, way back in a long time ago in Egypt. But then, as time went on, she became a domesticated black cat and had a domesticated black cat's head instead. And she was seen as a gentler side of Sekhmet. And that's how I use her. And I see her as a black cat or a, a black headed woman with a cat's head. And I work with a gentler side of Bastet. Now she's also a goddess, not only of cats, but also of healing and of maternal love, because she's usually depicted with a basket of kittens. I don't know if you can see mine, but I've got a basket of kittens down there. Generally, she is pictured holding a sistrum, because she loves music, and a sistrum is a musical instrument. It's a bit like a rattle um, that, that Egyptians used to play, and you can still get one and play it now. And also another symbol of hers is the ankh. So if you've got any ankh symbolism, you can put the ankh on your altar. Also, the eye of Ra is her symbol. So you can put like a picture of the Eye of Ra on your altar. Um, she's also the goddess of, as I said, healing, but particularly healing contagious diseases. Uh, she's a goddess of love and beauty and sensuality. She's, and you know, not just maternal love, but other love as well, but mostly maternal love. She's a goddess of fertility, of childbirth, of pregnancy. If you want healthy children, that's the goddess you ask for healthy children also of abundance. She's also called the snake destroyer. So if you have a lot of snakes around and you don't really want them around, those snakes are good healing. Um, then you can use her to try to ward off the snakes. Uh, she's a very gentle healer. Um, you can also use her in protection magic because she was the protector of the lower parts of Egypt. What else? She loved music and dancing and she's all about joy and she's very gentle and nurturing. She has this very gentle and nurturing energy. Um, her colours that I use on my altar are black, gold or purple because she's also royalty because cats in Egypt were seen as royalty. So uh, also about that, about, you know, if you want to feel sort of have more status and feel like you want more status, then you can use best energy or best iconography on your altar. Um, so magic you can do, uh, you can do things like familiar magic, like working with familiars, or working with animals, animal messages, communication, obviously healing, especially if you need to heal a contagious disease. Uh, any sort of uh, trauma work that you need to do with your mother or any, um, just any, if your mother needs healing or your children need healing, that's really good healing work to do when you have best energy. Also, uh, what other work can you do? You can do love spells, obviously, any spells to do with sensuality, uh, any glamour magic as well, any fertility spells. Also, um, she was a goddess of mummification, so if you want to do any ancestor or past life work, that's a good one, because one of her places is a cemetery. She really likes cemeteries. Um, so if you can go visit a cemetery and just be with the loved ones and clean graves and stuff, that's a good thing to do for Bast as well. Uh, you can do warding off evil. I find a really good thing to do with it is to ward off, do warding pentagrams. So do, do a pentagram in the air and think of her and her energy to ward off any negative spirits or any evil. Uh, also, obviously, if you want more abundance in your life, you can work with the best. And also just spend more time with your children, your mother, your loved ones, your animals. Uh, her crystals are the tiger's eye, which I have here. And tiger's eye is all about protection. So it's a good protection one. And it's also about courage and confidence, if you want more courage and confidence. And this is a really good one that I'm wearing here, this tiger's eye. And it's good because my mother actually gave me this tiger's eye. So both the mothering energy and the tiger's eye energy for Bast is really excellent for me to wear this today. <coughs> um, also the cat's eye, obviously, if you have a cat's eye and that's for focus and balance and stability. Uh, onyx, you can use onyx on your altar and that's for shielding and protection. 
You can use obsidian and that's for good for protecting your aura and also for absorbing any negative energy. You can use snowflake obsidian and that's for balance and harmony using bassery how harmonious and maternal energies there. And also rose quartz if you want to bring in a maternal energy as well. And you can do hematite and that's really good for warding off negative energy. And also when you're working in other worlds, when you're like astral traveling or doing um, journey work, you can work with hematite along with best energy. Um, in incense is good, uh, catnip. Um, but if you can't find the catnip incense, so you could also use vanilla. I find that she likes really vanilla. Egyptian musk is a good one, and that's what I'm burning on my altar today is Egyptian musk. Uh, also citrus, sometimes if you feel like working with her sun energy, because she's also a sun goddess. So if you feel like working with her sun energy, you can work with sort of citrus scents. Um, her herb is obviously catnip. Um, what else can I tell you? Uh, as I said, her symbols are cats, so you can put any cats on your altar. Any lion symbology, because Sekhmet was a lioness, so I said she was seen as the gentler side of Sekhmet. Uh, I, d I feel that even though Sistrums and Anks are her symbols, I also sometimes when she comes to me, she's holding a shepherd's crook, and other times she's adorned with um, pentagrams all over her. So I like to have pentagrams like I've got on my top here. You know, when I'm working with her, her mother was Ra and her father was, uh, sorry, her mother. Her father was Ra and her mother was Isis and um, she said she has a son now. There's a bit of contention here. Some people say her son was Nephritum and other people say it was my heart. You do whatever resonates with your soul. If you want to join with her son, mother and son energies, you work with whichever combination you want. Uh, her month was October and her months were October and November. And that's because there's a city named after her in Egypt called Babastus. And this is when they held her festival in Babastus in Egypt, either in November or October, they held her ceremony. Well, I just wanted to talk to you a bit about working with the Egyptian goddess Bast, and I hope you look after your animals today and cuddle your kitties if you've got them. I have a doggy, so I'll cuddle her. And I hope you have a wonderful day and do whatever resonates within your soul. I will also show you my Bast altar later, and I do realize I haven't put up my Azuli altar from yesterday, so I will do that as well. Okay, well, I hope you have a lovely day and do whatever is, resonates within your soul. Bye now.